Good morning, everybody. I arrived in the United States in 1991 at 24 years of age from the United Kingdom with my four-year-old daughter, Jade, in tow. I landed in New York City at JFK Airport, and it was only then that I realized that the only thing I had in common with the inhabitants of the United States was the English language, and at times, that was somewhat questionable. <laughs> my journey was not ending in this vast airport, but just beginning as I had to board a small charter jet to Burlington, Vermont, and onward to Plattsburgh, New York, my new home. My husband was in the United States Air Force and a native of St. Louis, Missouri, and he served as my American tour guide at times, especially in the grocery food store. I remember my first night in Plattsburgh after that marathon journey, we went on an excursion to the grocery store to find tea bags and any familiar English food. I was not impressed and really couldn't understand the concept of iced tea. Why not hot tea? With only the equivalent of a high school diploma and now another baby on the way, I had to figure out my destiny in this country. My United States orientation was also acquired through countless hours of documentaries and biographical specials, and yes, I admit it, talk shows. You see, the weather in this small town was brutally cold, and my British coat that I presumed adequate was not meeting the task, as the wind cut right through me. I found refuge in the Air Force Base Library on many cold days and would wander the aisles that explored careers and education systems in the United States. Alas, my days did not only consist of reading and exploring. My husband and I had a family to feed and furniture to buy. I had to get a job, and the local diner that was situated outside of the base met the following requirements. No daycare and minimal commute, as my driving was still a work in progress and the constant snow that greeted me didn't help. You see, Plattsburgh was known to have two seasons, winter and winter is coming. My job at the diner consisted of filling and decorating donuts that numbered at times in the hundreds and times, I believe, thousands. My shift was from 1 in the morning until 6 a.m., and it was during this time in a cold and damp kitchen I would fantasize and wonder about my future. Could I really become anything I wanted to be if I had the right education? What could I become in this great country? Will those television shows, documentaries, and historical accounts of people becoming successful and pursuing their dreams true? I toiled away, filling donuts every night for a year, listening to a beat-up radio playing old country songs. My toes would be cold, my fingers numb, but this experience drove me harder to pursue my dreams. The more I helped customers in the diner, the more I realized I would be a great nurse. There was no settling in Plattsburgh. We remained there for 18 months, and what would follow would be a series of relocations to other Air Force bases in different states that made my educational pursuit harder and harder. Finally, I completed my nursing degree in 1996 and so began a career that I would truly excel in and de devote myself to the pursuit of excellence. Every hurdle I met with each move involved the continual accrual of experience and education that reached a pivotal moment after I achieved my bachelor's degree in nursing in 2006. It was my graduation, and I looked across the aisle of the master's degree candidates who were wearing their robes with their striking color. This could never be me, I thought. They're so smart, I could never attain that. But then I discovered Western Governors University, and for the first time, I counted myself among one of the prospective candidates to obtain my master's degree in nursing. The moment that this became a reality was the day I completed my capstone oral defense in mid-September of 2012. I eagerly awaited my results and obsessively checked my email for the notification. At last, I got my task stream notification of evaluation. There it was. I was now a master's prepared nurse. I'd done it. Through countless hours of hard work and at times isolation from friends and family, Western Governors University had prepared me to meet this tremendous chapter in my life. I can now become part of the future of nursing and have a credible voice. This degree had made my earlier struggles in my life all worthwhile, and I took a deep breath and whispered to myself, Cora Edwards, MSN, RN, CCRN. I looked at my family as they were sitting enjoying a movie and I told them, I did it. I have my master's degree. I'm done. They roared with excitement. All the years of hard work paid off. After, complete, after completing countless night shift, driving long distances, having two additional children, becoming a certified nurse, and experiencing numerous relocations that the Air Force required of my husband, I had done it. 
However, this goal was not possible without the constant support of my husband, Bam, my children, Jade, Imani, Chanel, and Amiel, and the various mentors at WGU, specifically Sue Hunter and Brenda Luther. It always seemed like there was always someone available to help when I became overwhelmed with course content, and they were always consistent in the same beliefs in my ability, even when at times I'd lost it in myself. WGU has made me into a truly capable candidate for a master's prepared nursing role, and I recently realized this, that, this that this metamorphosis had in fact occurred after I recently interviewed for a new position at a local facility. The interview process included a presentation to the senior leadership team, and I, I would also have to repeat the same presentation to a panel of my potential peers. I was able to perform this presentation with confidence and prowess, I didn't just recite this material, I understood it. My confidence soared through the interview as I presented myself as what I was, a sound professional candidate that was, in that was indeed an ideal fit for the position. Every course and semester at WGU had prepared me to meet these challenges that are now part of my career. I am forever humbled and grateful for the journey that I have experienced and would not change any part of the process it involved. I now have the ability to read and comprehend a research article without any difficulty, all because of WGU. The WG nursing, fa nursing faculty has prepared me for this new journey into a changing health healthcare domain, and I truly feel ready to meet the trials that I may face with the ability to exact any change through research and dedication. Now, if I could do anything, I would go back in time and give the younger English Cora the following advice. Number one, buy a warmer coat. <laughs> Number two, iced tea in comparison to hot tea isn't as appalling as you think. And most importantly, keep filling the donuts because the future will be brighter and never stop believing that you can become anything in this great country. Thank you.